Museums around the world are filled with precious treasures, but who knows how many historical relics are still out there waiting to be discovered. The advancement of modern technology has rendered the X-marked map obsolete. The bulk of significant treasure finds are made by amateurs armed with nothing more than metal detectors, patience, and a thermos flask. If this list proves anything, it's that anyone can strike it lucky, even you. So watch closely and you may learn how to get your hands on your own share of the loot. Crosby Garrett Helmet In May 2010, a metal detectorist discovered dozens of pieces of a 1,800-year-old helmet. He brought the fragments into an auction house, and they spent over 200 hours repairing it. It was worth the effort, and the finished piece was stunning. The helmet featured a face mask that displayed a classically beautiful Roman face. The mask was attached to a bronze cap, which was topped by a griffin crest. The helmet is one of only three of a kind discovered in Britain. Many people were clamoring to buy it, and it sold for $3.6 million. Hoxney Horde when Eric Law's metal detector beeped, he thought he had simply found his friend's lost hammer. Instead, he had discovered the find of a lifetime. He had unearthed silver spoons, gold jewelry, and many gold and silver coins. After he had filled two bags, he realized that the treasure should be excavated by experts, and he reported the find to a city council. The next day, archaeologists hurried to the area. There they discovered 7.7 .7 pounds of gold and 52.4 pounds of silver. There were 14,865 Roman coins and 200 items of silver tableware and gold jewelry. They also found the missing hammer. These coins were used to date the hoard. It was worth 2.59 million and was buried no later than 450 AD. Staffordshire Hoard in July of 2009, Terry Herbert, a metal detector enthusiast, decided to try his luck in farmland close to his home in Staffordshire. Within days, he had discovered more than 10 pounds of treasure. The hoard consists of approximately 3,500 pieces, compromising up to 5 kilograms of gold and 1.3 kilograms of silver. The gold items are some of the finest examples of Anglo-Saxon art ever seen. Finely wrought golden animals, betrothal rings, and jasper sword hilts, a truly spectacular find. Local museums purchased the treasure for $5.3 million. Silverdale Hoard After 20 minutes of detecting in a field that Mr. David Wellen had previously searched several times before without finding anything more significant than a Tudor half groat, he found a signal. Buried about 16 inches, deposited together and in under a lead container, there was a Viking treasure dated around 900 AD. Most of the items were made in France or Germany. They include ornaments, ingots, and jewelry. The vessel in which they were hidden is lined with gold and decorated with vines, leaves, and six hunting scenes showing lions, stags, and a horse. The hoard was sold to the Yorkshire Museum, and the Wellens and the landowners were left to split a cool 1.5 million. Roman Coin Hoard Dave Crisp was hoping, at best, to find a Roman silver coin where he started searching in a farmer's field near Frome, England. After a few hours, he received a signal and what he discovered exceeded all of his expectations. That signal turned out to be one of the largest coin hoards ever found. It was a collection of 52,503 Roman coins amounting to an astounding $1 million in value. The coins were contained in a ceramic pot 45 centimeters in diameter. Most of them are made from deep base silver or bronze and date from 253 to 305 AD. Sterling Torx David Booth was looking for a new hobby, so he decided to start using a metal detector to get some fresh air. The first time he used it, he struck gold. He discovered four necklaces known as Torx, just six inches beneath the ground. Historians said that this was one of the most important hordes ever found in Scotland. All of the torques were made between 300 and 100 BC. There were multiple styles represented in the find. Two of the torques were designed in the local Scottish style. One was fashioned in a French style, and one was created in a Mediterranean style. The National Museums of Scotland purchased the neckbands for around $1.5 million. Ringlemere Cup Cliff Bradshaw, an amateur treasure hunter, decided to research a wheat field in England. He had already discovered several 7th century artifacts there, and he hoped to find more. Bradshaw nearly missed the faint whine of his metal detector. He had to dig 18 inches before he found the treasure. He had discovered an ancient gold cup known as the Ringlemere Cup. It was the second example of its type to come from Britain. 
The first one was discovered in 1837. The cup was purchased from Mr. Bradshaw by the British Museum for $520,000.